Find you in the presence of God. There is peace, there is love, joy, and happiness. So this is a wonderful day. Today we want to be looking at uh, some scriptures. And the title of our message today will be entitled, The Death of an Intercessor. The Death of an Intercessor. Now I know we just uh, came through the Easter process. Well, people did a lot of things about Easter and we were talking about Jesus' death. But I just want to keep on just a little bit farther and entitle this again, the death of an intercessor or the death of your, mine, our intercessor. And I want to just, I'm just going to use the true scriptures because I don't plan on being with you long because, uh, <coughs> excuse me, because I just want to give, give you just a little bit of God's word that will be enough to edify you this day and take you into the week. So as we begin to look at this verse, uh, we want to go to verse 2, chapter 2, verse 5 of 1 Timothy, first and foremost. And as we go there, I want to try to break some things down just a little bit. 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 5, and the verse says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mm -hmm. men, mm -hmm. the man, Christ Jesus. There is one God and one mediator between God and man. One God and one mediator between God and man. Or in God and men. And that man is Jesus. Now listen to what it said. That man is Jesus. Man is pure. That's one. But it says there's one God and there's one mediator between God and men. Men, M-E-N, meaning more, or the whole mm. family of men, meaning man, woman, child, and all. It's all. So, again, we got to look at the word because word plays a very important part in what we say we do. And if you use a word wrongfully, it takes away everything that God intended for it to be. And we know that the word tells us to not add to nor to take away. So we must be careful how we use the word. Man, as in one, plural, and, and singular, uh, and men, as in many. So it says there's one God, one mediator, rather, between God and men, and that man is Jesus. And he said, and Jesus. So, oftentimes we'll say, well, I, I, I need you to go with God for me. Go, go before God for me. Why should I go before God for you in this sense of the word? Now, I'm not saying as a pastor I can't pray for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But to ask the question, I need you to go before God in my behalf. Well, if we look at the scripture right here, the scripture said there's one mediator. One mediator that can go between God and, and, and me. And that man is Jesus. Not that man is Pastor Law, but mm -hmm. that man is Jesus. Now, yes, I can go and pray. I can pray in your behalf. I can say, God, uh, have mercy. God, do this uh, for sister so and so so. I can do that. But as a particular mediator, in other words, as one who is able to die on that cross, I can't do it. I couldn't do it. I ain't no way possible. Jesus was the only one could do it. He was the only one that did do it. He's the only one that will ever do it. Man cannot do it. There's one man, Jesus. One intercessor, Jesus. God says, I looked upon the earth to see if I could find one that was righteous. Not one. Not one. Couldn't find one. I looked high and I looked low. I looked at every place that my eyes would go, but I couldn't find not one that was able to be an intercessor or that would be able to die for the sins of man. So what did I have to do? I had to conform myself in the image of a man and come down to earth, go through what they go through. I had to take on the sins of everything that was going down and then be hung on the cross, died, but on that third day, I rose again. What man could do that? <laughs> when we look at these other gods that we so carefully uh, uh, give praise to, most of them are stones and bones, wood and chips. But Jesus, the intercessor, the one perfect intercessor, this then agreed, it says that the Mary come running to the sepulchre early that Sunday morning, looking for for Jesus, but if we find out he wasn't there, and she went to walk up and said, what, and saw this man, and she, what she thought was a gardener, said, what have you done with my Lord? He's not here. And oftentimes, we forget the thing that Jesus taught her, because what he said, I'm a, I will rise again. So he said, he's not here, he's risen. 
He's risen. See, an intercessor is not dead. A true intercessor, in other words, that man, Jesus, is not dead. He's alive. He's rose. He rose from the grave. <laughs> he rose. The girl, a uh, comedian, wrote a play, and she said that the man had a a sepulcher, a drave that he had got, and he went out and he 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 sold it to this other man, you know, or he lent it to the other man for a while. They they gave it to him. the man died and said, "Well, he could bury him in my sepulcher, bury him in this grave that I I got set aside for for me." And so when he went home, he would tell his wife about it. He said he walked in the house and he said, "Honey, I I I let this man get buried in our grave." In our, in our drain site. I let him get buried there. And she looked at him like, wait, wait a minute. What you mean you gave him our drain? What are we supposed to do? She said, he said, look, honey, that's okay. He only going to be there for three days. He's going to rise again. Hmm. So basically he just used it. That was Jesus. That was that intercessor. And this man knew, even though this lady put this down in a comical sense, but yet the man knew that Jesus was not going to be in there eternally, hmm. but that he would rise again. See, a true intercessor, a true defender of sin, a true person who takes on your sin and mm -hmm. die. In other words, when God came to earth in the flesh of man, he came for one reason, and that was to die. Now, we can add a whole lot of things to this. Mm -hmm. He came to save sinners. He came to save this. He came to do this. But he came to die because everything that took mm -hmm. place while he was alive didn't have mm -hmm. its conclusion. Until he died and rose. He had to die so that everything could be in line with what God had put in place. If he didn't die, mm -hmm. him coming to earth would have been for nothing. If he didn't die. He had to die. See, because when he died, that means he took on our sins to the grave with him. As long as he was mm -hmm. on his earth, walking his earth, we were still sinning and had no way to reach to God. We couldn't get to God. Long as Jesus just walking the earth with us, we couldn't. Because as he was walking, he was just taking on our sin, filling all our sin, just, just taking all this mess that we got upon himself. And when he died, it said he went down in the, in the pits of hell and snatched the keys from the devil. It said the, the veil was rented, the earth shaked. It was dark. People talk about it's dark at this time of day. It's 12 o'clock at midday. How can it be night like this and rain and thunder and stuff? Because the pain the heartache that God felt mm -hmm. that was put upon his son, his son, Jesus, was so unbearable. You could feel, can you just feel God just weeping and wailing at that moment when Jesus said, it is finished. Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. A true intercessor. Mm. A true intercessor. Uh, uh, Break that word, uh, look at that word for me real quick, intercessor. Until Jesus died, it was not complete. Until he rose, it was not complete. A person who intervenes on behalf of another, especially by prayer. A person who intervenes in behalf of another, especially by prayer. Yes, I can pray for you. But I can't be that divine intercessor. Only Jesus could do that. And, and we have to be very careful about what we teach and what we put out there for people. Because, oh, we, because we got this thing we call intercessory prayer. Okay, intercessory prayer is good. It's very good. Yes, we can intervene in prayer for someone. But what I'm trying to get you to understand in the, the long term, the, the real powerful point here as an intercessor, intercessor is Jesus, the perfect intercessor. <laughs> the true intercessor. He was an intercessor than just prayer. He just wasn't going to go out praying on our behalf. He wasn't just to say, God, forgive them for they know what they do. God, I pray that you don't take them out of this world, but that you keep in this world. He wasn't just doing that. He went to the full extent of it. He was the bullseye. Mm -hmm. He died and rose again. He said, what, what man is that that was, that was sacred to die for a friend? What man that will give up his life for a friend? Jesus gave up his life even for the enemies that crucified him, that lied on him. He gave up his life for them. And many lives will change. 
The soldier sitting at the bottom of the cross, he's life for change. So truly this is the man of God. A true intercessor. The death of an intercessor. The death of the intercessor. Read that verse one more time for me, please. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The mm. man, Christ Jesus. The man, Christ Jesus. He, Jesus only, was that adequate, adequate, whatever you want to call it, scapegoat. The only adequate sacrifice, the only adequate man, the only adequate intercessor that could do what he did in order that man could have the right to the key of life. Not the tree of life, but the key of life. Eternal <laughs> life in the heaven with God. And this is why when we pray, it is said, in the name of Jesus. In the name of that intercessor. In the name of you. Whatsoever you ask, if you ask in my name, Jesus told us, if you ask in my name, it shall be done of the Father. So when we pray, we, we need to get into the habit of go obeying scripture. Not just doing what we want to do, but obeying the scripture. Because the Bible tells us that to obey is better than sacrifice. Had to tell Samuel that. Saul that. Because uh, 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 he got it messed up. Say, come on now. What, what, what is it that you're doing? See, obey <laughs> is better than sacrifice. It's not enough, James said, just to know the scripture, but to be a doer of them. Not just to hear it, but doing it. Because when you do what Jesus said, the recompense and reward is so great. So Jesus was the only adequate mediator who had the understanding of what was taking place. See, because me, me, you, 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 you're going to talk to me about a need. I'm getting scared and ready to go in another direction. Uh-oh. -uh. I don't care how big or how it is. It's a needle. It sticks and hurts. But Jesus huh? whipped with catamount tail. How would you like somebody to take a rope, take broken glass, nails, screws, staples, rocks, and mix it in with glue and stuff and tie it all together where it's sticking together like concrete and razors and things and whipping you with it. Just whipping you with it. And you know if you got these nails and screws and glass and stuff in it, every time you hit, it's ripping something apart. It's tearing something up. Mm -hmm. What man could do that? Mm -mm. The intercessor, the man, mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, 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 Go to Hebrew right quick. Let's go to Hebrew right quick. Chapter chapter 9, verse 24 right quick. Just want to read just a little bit of that right there. Amen. Just a little bit of it. Yeah. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Mm-hmm. I need to get that with you. I need to get that with you. I need to get it with you. 24? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Read it one more time while I'm getting to it. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, mm. which are the figures of the true, but unto heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Mm -hmm. It says again, for Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands. Christ did not enter into an earthly Tabernacle. In other words, Christ just didn't go into a old church. Mm -hmm. When he rose from the grave, he just didn't go into this building. This physical building made with hands. And, okay, well, I'm here now, God. I'm here. I got it made. Now, he didn't do that. But Christ entered into the heavens. He, it, the Bible says he, that he is now sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. Right hand of the throne of God. See, the right hand uh, on the throne of God. That's where he at now. See, and, and, and if God is at the, at the right hand of the throne, where he's supposed to be, if Christ is there, he's there. Me and you. Yeah. And, and he's there. And he's there doing what he do. Uh, All the way to the right. Amen. Y'all see we have through. Through difficulties, through difficulties, through technical difficulties. Yeah.
but we're going to get together. See, the devil is always trying to cause a problem. But God be for you who can be against you. So again, I, I just want to bite that read again. It says, Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hand. Christ did not enter into an earthly tabernacle or temple regarding the offering up of the precious blood of the mercy seat. God, Christ, is where God desired that he be. After coming to earth, taking on the sins of man, and dying, being buried in a grave, being risen from the grave, mm -hmm. and come back to heaven where he belonged. God in the flesh. See? Let me tell you, this, this, this thing about God is so powerful. Christ is not entered to the place that is made with hands. And this is what we, we sometimes get all confused about. And a lot of times people don't want to go to church. Because they say, I ain't got to go to church to be saved. I don't have to be sitting up in the church to be saved. I don't have to go to church to be saved. No, you don't have to go and sit in that physical building. No, it's not you got to sit in the physical building. But what you need to do is be a part of the fellowship mm. of God. And if that means sitting in the physical building with people that are like mine, that's where you need to be. If you don't want to go into the church and sit in a temple and fellowship with other sisters and brothers, then you want to walk around here and every time somebody see you, you want to try to tell them about God, oh God, blah, 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 and I believe God. What If you believe, follow the word to the letter. Follow the word. But I ain't going to church because there's a hypocrite in the church. Well, right now you've been a hypocrite for talking about the hypocrites in the church. You better get that moat out your eye before you try to look at mine. I washed my face this morning. Mm -hmm. And this is what God is saying to us. So Christ, yes, he's not, he not, he not in that temple that, bait, that bit with hand. No, he's not sitting up in there. He's not sitting up there. But you need to be sitting there sometime, fellowship with me and them and us together. So the powerful are we together that we can reach to the heavens to receive what God has for us. <laughs> One of the things about us now, people, human, Christians, we are not together as we should be. We are not seeing miracles like before because we are not together like before. We are not seeing healing on a large scale because we are not together on a large scale. Mm. We are not seeing financial blessings like windows open on heaven and fall down on us because we are not praying enough for the windows to open up. We are not reaching up to heaven trying to get that window open enough. We see so much stuff going on in the land because we're not praying like we're supposed to to weed it out. We're not fighting against the devil anymore. We're not fighting against uh, our flesh and blood. We're fighting against spirituality, spiritual weakness in high places. That's what we're fighting against, but we're not praying enough to fight these things off. You believe in God? Yes, you do. But the devil believe also and they tremble. So what's the big deal I believe? It's not what I believe in, what I'm practicing. And I practice what I believe, then we got something coming. Then when the enemy comes at me, I can fight him off and he'll flee like a bowl of fire. Jesus said, I deserve him anyway. Jesus said, I deserve him anyway. Fall for him like a bowl of lightning. So he can fall. If you put the right thing on, he'll fall. But you got to put it on him. I'm a child of the most high. God is my father. He has a cattle on the father than he is. I'm the apple of his eye. He said that his word to go out before he would not return to him void, but it shall come to everything he pleased and proper the way he pleased. He said, he said, he's ahead. You the head and not the tail. You above and not beneath. You're a blessing and fear. You're a blessing and courage. He said all this stuff. When you put this stuff out there, the devil got to flee. Be sober. Be vigilant because the devil is a roll around. Walk about seeking whom he may devour. Be sober minded. Be alert. Looks good. Smell good. Tastes good. Ain't always good for you. I drink milk sometimes. Ain't good for me. <laughs> Jesus, the intercessor. Let's go on to Romans chapter 8, verse 34, and we might end up there for our scriptures concerned. We do have a couple of Romans. We're going to go back a little bit to Romans. Uh huh. Right. Romans chapter 8, chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 34. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. And I really love these particular verses here. Especially in the Roman sections. But um, so we're going to read it. Amen. You there? Read, please. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Mm -hmm. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Mm -hmm. Who is even at the right hand of God, mm -hmm. who also maketh intercession for us. 
who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercessor for us. And intercessor, he intercepts. He injects. He goes before. He speaks on your behalf. Because why? Because at this time, you can't do it. There's something hindering you from being able to do it. Uh -huh. and, and, and when it comes to Jesus, he's doing it because you can't do it. Plain and simple, you can't do it. You cannot go to God the way Jesus went to God because Jesus had to go to God as an intersection during that time in order to make preparation to clear a path so that we would be able to come to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. Yet still, in the name of Jesus. You go to you go to these things. You remember you used to go out in clubs and things like that and say, just tell them so-and-so sent you. Tell them so-and-so said so-and-so, so-and-so. You couldn't get in if you didn't have that, that cold word or whatever. You wouldn't get in there. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't know Jesus, that person, Lord, and Savior, you ain't getting nowhere either. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we had a victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of David, the devil must flee. In the name of Jesus. Back up where I was there, 234. And he says, so, 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 so who is even at the right hand of God? He's, Jesus has been exalted. Christ has been exalted. He's there. Who also makes intercession for us. At the right hand of God, showing that his sacrifice has been accepted and, <clears throat> check this out, a guarantee. Guarantee. The guarantee part means, now I'm guaranteed you something. I'm guaranteed of eternal life if I stay focused on Christ. If I, if I stay focused on the word, I'm guaranteed this life eternally in the heaven with God. If I stay focused, I'm guaranteed. Jesus did it. This intersection died so that I would have a guarantee, a guarantee to be adopted into the family of God. So many of us nowadays, we die for nothing. Just for nothing. Because our attitude and our plans and our direction has led us in the wrong direction. It has not led us down the pathway which Christ had taught us to go. So it, our death become in vain. And sometimes I wonder, we crucify Christ all over again in the things we do or don't do. It's like his death was just in vain. In vain. Uh, let me go back again. His sacrifice has been accepted, which guarantee intercessions for us. It's guaranteed that Christ is sitting at the right hand of God talking about me. Hmm. Father, look at it. I know he still got some problems. I know he still have issues. I know he still growing, but look at it, Father. He's still your child. He's crying. I died for him too. That's what he's doing. I am the intercession sensor for him too. That's, that, that's what he's doing. Forgive him, for he know not what he do. He's yet still learning. He's yet still growing. This is why we don't look down on people in the church. We don't look down on people, period. As I often say, whenever you look down on somebody, you pick them up. If you ain't picking them up, keep your head to the sky. Keep looking up like you're somebody. And you ain't nothing because you wouldn't look down and help that person up. Christ looked down to help. Christ didn't walk around his head up in the air. Christ had one piece of clothing, one pair of sanders. The gown that he wore was weaved in one direction. It had no seams in it. See, God made it for him. And God is making a way for us. He made a way for us through this intercessor, Christ. And all we have to do is walk in victory. Read one more verse there. Read 35 for me. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm. Shall tribulation, or distress, mm -hmm. or persecution, mm. or famine, Come on now. or nakedness, mm. or peril, or sword? Real? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. Mm -hmm. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors 
through him that loved us. Amen. Come on, read on, read on. For I am persuaded that neither death, mm -hmm. nor life, mm -hmm. nor mm -hmm. angels, come on, come on. nor principalities, yes. nor powers, come on. nor things present, mm -hmm. nor things to come. Amen. Amen. Nor height or nor death, mm. nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, mm -hmm. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am persuaded, he said, because Christ is my intercessor. Listen to what I'm saying. Because Christ is my intercessor, and I have this key now to God. It says that it is written, for his sake we are killed all the day long. Killed all day long. For Christ's sake. No, one, one, one scripture told us that, but Jane, I believe Jane, said that we must die daily, mortify our body, mortify the physical body, the natural body, meaning die to the sin and stuff daily by day. We know we die in the natural sense. We'll say that real quickly. But what about dying in the spiritual sense? Dying away from all those filthy stuff that goes in it. So daily we die to these things. Daily we put on Christ. We better put on Christ. For his sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, but in all things, we still are yet more than conquerors. Though we die in these things, though we are counted as sheep for the slaughter, we are still more than conquerors. You're going to the slaughter to be killed, but you're still saying and praising God. Still saying and praising God. You're going to the slaughter, but you're still, he said, oh, we are more than conquerors. Even though we are in the battle of shadow of death, we still are more than conquerors. God is still with us. So he goes on to say, he goes to say, through his, through, 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 because he loves us. So we're more than coming on up. So he goes on to say, we as Christians must be persuaded. We as disciples of God must be persuaded. And why must we be persuaded? What should we be persuaded of? Because many of us are still in doubt. So he said, I am persuaded. I am persuaded that neither death nor life. Nor angels, nor principality, nor power, nor present things, nor things that will come. I am persuaded that none of these things will hinder me from serving God. We must be persuaded things. I am persuaded that neither height, nor death, nor any other creature, nor shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, which is in this intercessor. I must be persuaded. I can't be like this him. Wish you watch it. It's not a Rubik cube. I must find my spot and stay on it. Target the, the food, whatever that chain they call it, whatever the chain they call it, target, the, the clothing chain, whatever it is, has a red circle with a red dot red in the center. It's the target. If you hit the target, you'll find what you're looking for. Jesus is our target. That intercessor, that, that the death of my intercessor is my target. And if I keep my eyes on that target, if I keep my mm -hmm. eyes on that intercessor, if I keep my eyes on the persuasion that death, nor height, nor death itself, nor any other creature that's alive or that will be alive or any person that can come through my path will separate me from the love of God. I must be persuaded. I must understand in all things that I'm more than just a conqueror. As God is my heavenly father. He's told me, he said, there's no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Right. But every tongue, every old rusty, nasty, sloppy thing. That's why, that's why you hear people say, brush your teeth before you go to bed at night. Because you're going to bed all those filth in you. Waking up all that filth still in you. Amen. It may seem illogical, but it's illogical. I must be, understand that note, that filth, that rise, that lays down within me, that I let stay bedded down in me, will hinder me from being a persuaded Christian that other things cannot hinder me. I must be persuaded. I must be persuaded that there's only one intercessor uh -huh. between God and man, and that man is God uh -huh. in the flesh. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I got to be persuaded, he's saying. Come on, man. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but do we really understand the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Do we want to really understand why he rose? He just didn't raise so, rise up out of the grave so we can have some eggs. He just didn't raise us so we can get our Easter dress and suit on. 
That's not why Jesus rose from the grave. He, Jesus rose from the grave, and you can put anything in all that you want to put on there, but Jesus rose from the grave so that you would have life and life eternally. He rose from the grave to sit on the right hand of the heavenly Father and speak about you, that God was... He, I'm telling you, he told Jesus, he told God, said, God, look at Pastor Lord down there. Look at Sonny down there. Look at Charlie down there. Just look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> he made mistakes in life, but he's still your child. See, because I died for him too, God. He ain't saying God, he said, Father. I died for him too. That person that I'm looking, that, looking down on, he died for him too. <laughs> That person in the nursing home, he died for him too. Yeah. That person out there on that corner begging for money, Christ died for that person too. So when you drive by, if you don't want to do nothing, just keep on driving. Keep your head in front of you. Don't look down on them. Because one day, and all these bars and stuff we got going on in this community right now, you better be careful. Because one day that could be you. Jesus came into the world to die, but to die and raise or rise up for as our intercessor. He came to bridge the gap between God and man. And not just man, but sinful man. Mm -hmm. Sinful mm -hmm. man. You see, we are men needs, we as men, we need someone to stand between us and God. See, as men, now let me put this here, as men in general, we need a woman. What you mean we need a woman? Y'all don't need a woman. Mm. You must have need somebody and God said it's not good for man to be alone. So he created a woman. So you must need somebody to help you in some form or fashion. If, if God didn't think you need a woman, he'd have never created a woman. He'd have never laid you down and, and commit and, and, and perform a surgery. I mean, the, the, the major surgery by taking a rib from you and creating a woman for, and bring her to you and saying, now nah, this is yours. Now what you going to name her? Says, I'm a man. I'm a man. Her woman. She's my woman. She's a part of me. So, 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 that connection there, this is how we need Christ. Because we're in the image, the same image. And we need him to get to what we're trying to get to. If we don't have Christ, we can't get to the Father. It's, it's impossible. We need, we need, we need our wives we, and, and, and we need our mother because sometimes we, we just can't think. We just can't think. And they are our, what he called our help meet. Our help meet. Each animal has a help meet. There's male and there's female. It's the way God sought the thing up. So we need each other. We need we need other people. We need neighbors. We, we need these people. Why? Because we all are in this circle of life together. And if we all was the same, don't try to make me like you, though. I'm not like you. I'm bigger than you. I'm smaller than you. I'm fatter than you. I'm skinnier than you. I eat more than you. I eat less than you. I make more than you. I make less than you. I got a home. You. I don't have a home. We are not the same. So don't try to make someone be as you want them to be. Let them be what God created them to be. And you'll be a witness to what you see. And if they see something in you that's gratifying, that will gravitate them to you, that's in line with God, that's in likeness of God, then they will gravitate to that. Other words, you will be a walking miracle, a walking witness for that individual. I talked with someone a few days ago. From another state. Won't call the state name, won't call the person name. That's not how we do these things, pastors. And they said that people's going to church, talking. But that sad night for they went to church, they were out there partying and drinking, shooting up and doing all that. But they got a Sunday morning with church, but then when they got out of church, they went right back to doing what they were doing. Pouring and drinking. And said, now, they don't even go to church at all. They just pouring and drinking and doing what they want to do. Just to put God on to the back. And they said, they said, me, said, Pastor, how can I follow that person? How can I look at that person and want God when they decide they acted? See, what we fail to understand that we are walking testimonies. I we are that. walking witnesses. That old saying, do what I say and not as I do, that's not true. That's not true. Why is it not true? Because people will do what they see you doing. Kids will do what they see you doing. It ain't what you tell them not to do because think about it. You tell them to do something, they do it anyway. They're going to do what they see you doing. Parents, don't argue in 
front of your children. Don't put each other down in front of your children. This stuff is up there. <laughs> if you want to talk, talk about Christ. Put Christ first. Let them hear you talk about Christ. Let them hear you talk about how much you care about your spouse. Then, if you want to talk about your spouse, let them hear the good side of everything because that's what Christ was all about. We ought to be witness. I can't follow you if you try to lead me down the road that's going to take me to hell. I can't follow you. Woe to you, pastor, that will lead your people in the wrong direction. Woe to you. Woe to you who hinder a small child and stop them from coming to me. You know, if you had a, a monster on tie around your neck, you cast into the sea. Woe to you, oh hypocrites and whitewashers. Woe to you, he says. That intercessor is speaking loud and clear to us. He died for a reason. We as men needed someone to stand in the gap so we could get ourselves back with God. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we can get back to God. It's intercessor, Jesus. Only way, only way. Yeah. We, 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 man needed an intercessor and not mm -hmm. an idol. That's the thing, not an idol. This thing right here, that's a piece of junk. That's mm -hmm. idol. That, it, 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 it's something that, that, I don't know what it is, to tell you the truth. But it has nothing to do with Christ sacrificing on <laughs> the cross. This could be used as an idol, worshiping this cross, this piece of cross, a piece of metal, worshiping it, thinking I got something going on because I'm wearing a cross. This ain't no vampire. They ain't gonna hold us up and wipe off no devils. <laughs> Them demons don't care nothing about this piece of metal here. I got to have Christ in my heart. I got to be able to speak that word when the devil comes to Get away from me. Say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, to which I am. Count those things that are not as though they be. And he goes on to say, See, an ayah, you can't have a goat talking about, I can serve this goat because that's my God. You can't serve a dog. You can't serve a cow. You can't serve a car in a house and stuff, but that's my God. It's not your job. It's not your God. Those are idols. Jesus' sacrifice established him as the only whole, fully trustworthy intercessor of mankind. His sacrifice. The only fully trustworthy and you can trust it. If Jesus said you can trust it, you can count on it. You can count on it. Sacrifice for mankind. He is the only intercessor that could and did bring us back to God after the fall of our father Adam. He's the only one that could and the only one that did. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did a lot of things. They couldn't be an intercessor. They couldn't bring us back to God. They couldn't do it. There's a saying said, when you want something done right, do it yourself. Well, guess where it comes from? It must have come from God because he said, I had, to, I had to come down in the flesh. I had to leave hell and come in the flesh, in the flesh of my son. I had to come on down here. I had to do it myself. Mm -hmm. I know some of y'all may not have heard like that before. That's where it is. I had to do it. He had to come on down here. You want something done right, do it yourself. So he had to leave, come to earth in the flesh of man, in the body of his son, Jesus Christ. To do what needed to be done. Because he looked upon the earth to find someone he couldn't find. Not mm. one to do it. Mm. We're getting ready to wrap this thing up. We're getting ready to wrap it up now. Uh, uh, go, to, go, to, go to Hebrew for me, please. Uh, Hebrew chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrew chapter 7, verse 25. Amen. Again, uh -huh. I want to thank all of you who are out there listening to the service this morning, who are watching the service this morning. God bless you. We love you. I see some messages that's been coming in, and uh, we just thank you. And again, we here at the Stephen Ministry, we are just trying to do what God has called us to do. We may not be what some people want, but we are what we are, and we glorify, we magnify God, because we always putting our praise on it. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, mm. seeing he is ever liveth to make intercession for them. He is always 
In other words, Jesus is always on the job making intercession for those who would come unto God. He's always on the job. We say how, how the enemy don't, never stop working. Jesus don't stop working. You think he just went there and sat beside God just sitting there with leg crossed, chilling out? No, he is working, doing what he was called to do. He's still, as you think back for a brief moment, a few minutes ago, I said, he is sitting by God talking about me, telling God to look at me. Jesus is not just sitting there to be sitting there. He ain't up there drinking wine and all that good party like you think of me. Jesus is still working a work that he was called to do. To bring us to God. To bring us to God. To bring us to the Heavenly Father. To bring us into this eternal life in the heaven. He is studying, working and working and working for us on our behalf. Read that one more time for me. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever liveth to make intercession. He's ever living to make intercession for us. He's not just sitting around twiddling his fingers now saying, it is done, it's all over with now. I don't have to do nothing else. He's not doing that. It's just like you when you come to, to, to God. When you become a Christian, you just don't sit around. You continue to try to go further and further down the road of happiness. Because that's what it is. The song, the song said, uh, 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 by this little young man wrote a song and said, Jesus saved. And it said, from the uttermost, from the guttermost to the uttermost, Jesus saves. Jesus saved. As I heard a joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saved. Talking to everybody all around, spread that news all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. From the guttermost to the uttermost, but Jesus saved. In other words, he don't care how high he is, he sure don't care how low he is. Because that's where he's going to start first and foremost. At the lowest part. Why? Because the first shall be last and the last shall be first. This is why. What flows from Jesus to every member of his body abundantly grace for every need now and forever. What flows from Jesus to every member of his body, that means all of whoever is set to Christ, and as personal Lord and Savior, is an abundant of grace. God grants us grace because of that intercessor and through that intercessor. The death of my intercessor was more than just Jesus died, being buried and raised up again. It's more than just that. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you this morning. Yes. And as we come before you in the name of Jesus, we come before you in the name of that intercessor, Father God, the true living intercessor. We thank you for your mercy and we thank you for that abundant grace. Oh God, we love you today. We thank you for this time that we have had, Father God, to get into your word, to give your word to your people, Father God. It is our prayer and our hope that those who are listening, those who are watching, Father God, can receive this word, receive it, this knowledge that Jesus Christ, the intercessor, is yet still at work on their behalf. We pray this through prayer for We thank you. We pray for those who are out there who are in dire need of prayer, who may be struggling and going through some things right now. We pray that through the love of Christ Jesus that you will reach out and just touch them, disperse your ministering angels to minister to them right now, to minister to that need, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who are lost. We pray for those who are near as well as those who are afar. We pray, O oh God, for this country, O oh God. That you'll send for a way, Father God, a spirituality, Father God, that once again we begin to pray and see things moving in your behalf. So we love you and we thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. From the Steel Free Ministry, this is Pastor Law and family. We just love you. We praise you. And we say this to you. When things are going bad, what do we do? We put a praise when on it. When things are going good, what do we do? We put a praise on it. 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 God bless you and we love you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>